Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to my Linux Essentials series. I have a lot of all new episodes planned for this series for 2022, and I'm excited to get started. In today's video, we're going to look at sudo. Sudo is a command that I've been mentioning over and over and over again when it comes to the various tutorials that are on this channel, but it hasn't had a standalone video yet, which is what this video is intended to be. Now, we're just going to go over the basics of sudo in this video, but they're basics that you might not already know, and sudo is very important, so it's a good idea that you understand sudo and how it works. And that's exactly what's on the list for today. Now, before we get to that, though, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. And Linode is a cloud server provider, but not just any cloud server provider. They are a Linux cloud server provider. And if you use the URL that's on the screen right now, if you don't already have an account, you can get one with $100 in free credit to start you out. And that credit is actually good for three months. And considering that they have Linux server plans that are available as low as $5 a month, there's a whole lot of Linux that you could fit within that credit. You could set up a blog, your very own Nextcloud server, or you could even just set up a Linux server that you could use to go through the tutorials on this channel. In fact, if you've ever been to the official website for this channel, you've already used Linode because all of the web presence for Learn Linux TV actually runs on Linode. Using Linode's dashboard, you have fast access to create your very own Linode instance. You have access to DNS, block storage, object storage, containers, and much more. And their platform is even faster now because they've recently rolled out NVMe-based block storage devices, which are just awesome because what could be better than NVMe? And the only thing that might be better than that is the fact that Linode has all kinds of different Linux distributions to choose from. So regardless of what your favorite distro happens to be, Linode has you covered. They even have, get this, Arch Linux. So yes, you could use Linode's platform to be able to say, I run Arch. Definitely check out Linode. Their platform is awesome. Thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring this video, along with many others on this channel. I really appreciate it. Definitely check them out to get your very own Linux server. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into sudo. All right, so let's get started. As you probably already know, there's going to be various commands that you can only use with root privileges. Basically, anytime you enter commands that require root privileges, which are the commands that generally make changes to the system, you're going to need access to root or sudo. Sudo is something that you could use in place of root. So for example, if I was to run apt update, that's not going to work because I'm logged in as my local user. And this command right here needs root privileges in order to run. Now what I could do is type su and then hyphen and then press enter. And that'll allow me to enter my root password. Not every system is going to have the root account enabled though. So you don't have to follow along with this part. But I'm entering in the root password. The root account is enabled in my case. And now I am logged in as root. So now I will be able to run apt update, as you can see. Now that's all well and good, but what I'd like to do instead is not use the root account. One of the benefits of using sudo is that it allows you to forego the root account completely. Once you have sudo set up, you can actually lock the root account because technically you shouldn't really need it anymore. And you especially shouldn't have root enabled for SSH login. That's especially bad. We definitely don't want that. But what I'll do is type exit to go back to my normal user account. And here we are. Now, on my end, I do have sudo installed. To prove it, I can type which and then sudo. And I do see some output, which means that sudo is installed. The sudo package is not always installed on every instance. Ubuntu, for example, always has that installed. That's just part of the defaults. If you're using a cloud image or something like that, it might be configured differently. For example, if you install Ubuntu manually, the root account is locked by default. But here on Linode, which is where I have this actual server, they include the root account by default. I have other videos that walk you through user management, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. But what we want to do right now is find out if we have sudo installed, and we could find out by typing which sudo. And in my case, I do have that installed, so I won't need to install sudo. 
Now the next thing that I recommend you do is find out what the sudo group is on your distribution. Usually the group will be either named sudo or wheel, but we have to know which one. So what we're going to do is take a look at a very special file, the sudoers file, which will give us that information. The thing is though, we won't be able to access it as our normal user. For example, if I type cat, then etsy sudoers, just like that, permission is denied. So if you don't already have sudo set up, you will need to switch to root for this. And this step is probably unnecessary if sudo was already installed on your system. You should be able to use sudo already. We'll get to that. Anyway, let's take a look at the config. So etsy sudoers. And right here, near the end of the file, it says allow members of group sudo, that's the name of the group right here, to execute any command. And in this file, we have percent sudo, that's a group. So I know in my case, the group for sudo is named sudo. On your end, it might be called wheel. You just take a look at this file. You find out which one actually has access to all, which is usually going to be sudo or wheel. Just make a note of which group name your distribution actually uses. So next, what you'll do is type groups and then the username that you use to log into your server, whatever that happens to be. In my case, it's J. And as you can see here, my user is already a member of the sudo group, so I didn't need to do any of this. I already have sudo installed, and I just found out that sudo is the group name for the sudo group, which I am actually a member of already. So in my case, I'm actually all set to use sudo right now. In your case, if your user is not a member of the group that you need it to be a member of to access sudo, what you could do under root is type user mod dash lowercase a uppercase g and then you type the name of the group it could be wheel or it could be sudo and then finally the name of your non-root user account which i have here as j now again my account's already a member of that group so i don't need to do this i'm all set so i'll type exit and i'm back to my local user account now if your user was not already a member of the appropriate group and you had to add that group then what you should do is actually log out of your server and then you log back in. And the reason why you might want to do that is because group membership doesn't actually take effect until you log out and log in. Now, again, that's only if you had to add your user to a group if it wasn't already a member of that group. But if it is a member of that group, you should be good to go. And to double verify that, you could type groups with no username as your local user account and just confirm that you have that group, which we do. Now there's one example I want to give you that's very easy, very quick, and that is sudo-l. So if you're curious about which permissions you actually have access to with sudo, sudo-l will let you know exactly what you're allowed to do. So I'll press enter and I'll type in the password. This is your user password right here. And I'm able to do everything. Check this out. I have access to all, all, all. I'll explain what this means shortly, but if you do see this, that means your user has access to do, well, everything. And earlier, I tried to run apt update, just like this, which of course isn't going to work. But now I can use sudo. And as you can see, I'm logged in as my non-root user account. And I placed sudo in front of the command, which elevates my privileges to root by default. Technically, sudo can allow you to impersonate other users as well, but by default, it's going to assume that you want to run the command with root privileges, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, it's working just fine. Now I'll give you another example. Let's pretend that you entered a command and you forgot to use sudo, something that I forget to do all the time. I'll just use this command as an example again. But we'll pretend that this is a very long command and I would just rather not type everything all over again. So I'm a bonehead and I forgot to use sudo. It happens to all of us after like 20 something years, I still forget to use sudo. So don't feel bad if that's something that you forget to do. But what we can do to rectify this problem very quickly is type sudo, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, just like that. And what these two exclamation marks represent is the command that you've run most recently, not the one that we're about to run, but the you know previous command that'll rerun that command, but it's going to prefix it with sudo. So you're saying, I want to run sudo, and then add the most recent command that I've run at the end of this. So that allows you to essentially rerun the previous command, but insert sudo in the beginning. So if I press enter, 
it's going to work. And it even gives you the command right here that you're entering. So as you can see, it's running sudo apt update, even though all I typed was this. And because apt update was the previous command that I ran before this one, then the complete command now looks like this. So if you forget to use sudo, now you know the magic trick. So at this point, what I want to show you is the Etsy sudoers file. Now, you should never actually edit this file directly, so I'm going to open it in an editor. I don't recommend that you do that, though. I'm just showing you what it looks like. So I'll just use nano, and I'll also use sudo because this is a protected file. Again, you don't have to follow along with this. The file is Etsy sudoers. Now, it's out of scope of this particular video to give you a complete overview of this file and all the possible options that you can put in here, but I'll give you some examples. Now again, you would not want to edit this file directly, so do not open this up in an editor like I'm doing. I'm only doing this just because I want to show you what it looks like. So what we actually want to pay attention to is if we scroll all the way down here, we can see the configuration for the root user, the admin group, and the sudo group. Now in Ubuntu and Debian, we often use the sudo group as I was doing to give our user permission for sudo commands. But right here, we could actually see the syntax. So you could create a new group if you'd like. You can call it whatever you'd like and put a percent sign in front of it, essentially copy this line. And then you can create a new group that'll have access to sudo. But it might be a little confusing as far as what these alls mean right here. We have all, 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 and we actually have alls all over the place. We have quite a few alls in these lines. But what does that actually mean? And the first all actually refers to the host or the server that you are allowed to execute the commands on. Traditionally, we just leave this at all. You could use something like Ansible, Chef, or Puppet, whatever your configuration management utility happens to be to have a default configuration file for this. But what we want to do is just leave this at all. Yes, it is about the host name, but it really doesn't matter because we're only concerned with executing commands on this local server. So all of your servers will have all for the very first keyword right here in this line. So here we have all colon all in parentheses. And we also have that right here as well. And then here we have one that has only one all in parentheses, but regardless, this section means the same thing each time. It pertains to the user that is allowed to access those commands. And what this actually refers to is impersonating users. By default, sudo actually impersonates root. So when you enter sudo and then a command, and you don't actually tell it what user you want to access a command from, then it's going to assume that you mean root. And 99% of the time when people use sudo, that's exactly what they're doing. But you can impersonate other users as well. So the first all within the parentheses here refers to a user that you're allowed to impersonate. So obviously root is the owner of the entire system. Root is able to impersonate any user on the system. And then we have a colon and the next all in parentheses refers to the group. So we have user and group. So we could have a username here and we could have a different username here. That would mean that that user is only allowed to impersonate the user that is included right here. But if it's all, then that user can impersonate any user on the system. And the same goes with group. Finally, the last all in the string refers to the commands that the user is allowed to use with sudo. So as we can see, root is allowed to do everything, and members of the sudo group are allowed to do everything as well. So this is why when you run sudo apt update, sudo dnf update, or you know sudo apt install something, you're able to run all of those commands because we have all here by default, which means you can run any command with sudo that you'd like. So here, as you can see, if a user is a member of the sudo group, they get these privileges right here. But we can also add a new permission line if we want to be a little bit restrictive as far as what the user is allowed to do. But again, we won't make our changes in this file. If we were to do that, that would be a problem. Because if we make a mistake and then we save the file, we might actually be locking out our ability to make changes on the server. We definitely don't want that. So we do have a dedicated command that allows us to edit this file. And that command provides a bit of syntax checking that'll help us ensure that we didn't make any mistakes. Yes, it's still possible to make a mistake and it won't catch it, but most of the time it will catch any mistakes that you make. I'll just exit this editor and to do that, I'll hold control and press X and I'm back on the command line. 
So how exactly would we edit that file properly? I mentioned that you should never open sudoers in an editor, but I was also alluding to changes that you can make in the file to configure sudo. That sounds a little conflicting, but I also mentioned that there's a command specifically for this purpose, and that command is by sudo. So we can put sudo in front of that, which we need to do because the by sudo command will help us facilitate making changes to the sudoers file. And in order to make changes to something like sudoers, we will need root privileges. So we have a bit of a chicken and egg problem here. Anyway, I'll press enter. And we actually have the file right now opened in nano. Sometimes it'll open in vim or by, depending on the configuration of your distribution. But what you'll do is you'll make whatever changes you wanted to make right here. And what I'm going to do is create another line. So here we have a section specifically for users. It really doesn't matter where you put the line, but we may as well put it where the other user declaration is. We only have root right now. Just add another blank line. And let's say that I have a user named Tux on the system. And what I'll do is give Tux access to sudo. Now what I could do, of course, is just type the same thing that I have in the line above this one. And if I was to save this file, that would give the user Tux access to everything via sudo. That might not be what I want to do, but for now, let's just save the file and see what happens. Control O and then enter in the case of nano, and then Control X to exit out. Now at this point, if it detected any errors, it would let us know. Thankfully, it didn't detect any errors, so we should actually be good. But the user that I referenced doesn't actually exist on the system, so what I'm going to do is type sudo, and I'll type add user. I want to add the tux user to the system. Type in a super secret password. And now we have tux on the system. And you just saw me give access to everything to tux directly because of the syntax that I included. So if I switch over to the tux user, and for that I'll just cheat and do sudo su hyphen and then tux. Now I'm logged in as Tux. If I type sudo and then dash L, again, that'll let us know what Tux is able to do or what the user you're logged in as is able to do. And as you can see, Tux is able to do everything just like we expected. But like I was alluding to earlier, we do wanna be a bit more restrictive with sudo. Just because you can give someone access to everything doesn't really mean that's the best idea. So what I'll do is scroll all the way back down here and let's restrict Tux to be able to do one specific thing. How do we do that? Well, I mentioned that all, at least the one at the end, is for command. That's the command or commands that the user is allowed to use with sudo. So what I'm going to do, at least in the case of Ubuntu and or Debian, is change this to user bin apt. So let's save the file. No errors, so far so good. And now we're logged in as Tux. So what I'm going to do is type sudo apt update and it's working. That's pretty cool. So how about we go ahead and reboot the system? We can't. So with sudo, this particular user is only allowed to use apt. Go back down here to our configuration line. And what I'm going to do is add another command right here. This time I'll add the rm command. Let's save the file and exit out. And next I'll create a test file. Just want to have something to try to remove. So I created a file named test file at the root of the file system. And we can see the file right there, it's owned by root. So let's try switching to the Tux user and seeing if we can remove that file. So we'll type rm and then test file. Which of course we can't do right now because, well, we need to use sudo. And it did let me do it. The test file is gone. And we were able to do that because we have access to run the rm command via sudo, which again, we can confirm 
by typing sudo l. And as you can see, we're able to run user bin apt and also user bin rm. And if you don't know the full path to a command, it's pretty easy to find it. You can just type which and then the command, and that gives you the full path. So that's how you know what to add into the sudoers file. So we'll exit out of here. And the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is set it up to where you won't need a password. Of course, this is going to lower your security. So whether or not you want to do this on your end, I'll leave it up to you, your server, your decision. So we'll scroll down. And then what we'll do is go to the end of the parentheses. We're going to type a brand new option. All in caps, we will type no pass WD and then colon. And we have a space in between the colon and the list of commands. Save the file. And let's see what happens. There's no password prompt, so it just went ahead and executed sudo apt update immediately without prompting us for anything. That's pretty cool. So that was a basic overview of sudo. Just wanted to make sure you guys understood how it works, how to configure it, and we'll just go through a quick overview. So I'll run sudo by sudo again because we really don't want to edit this file any other way. And if I scroll down, we have the actual config line that we've been working with, but the way this works as an overview is we have the user. We know that this is a user, this one right here, root, because there's no percent symbol in front of it. We also know this one is a user. There's no percent symbol in front of that either. And we have groups down here, percent admin and percent sudo. Those are groups that we could add a user to that would give them access to sudo because they have access to all, all, all across the board. Right here, we're actually restricting this particular user to a few commands because sometimes you don't want to give a user access to every command. Maybe this particular user is only going to be tasked with running apt and also running the rm command. The rm command is actually a little dangerous to give someone, but we're going to ignore that. The point is we could restrict a particular user to specific commands. That's a good thing to do. Now, another thing I want to show you before I close this video, and you should absolutely not follow along with me, I repeat, do not follow along with me. I'm going to include an error on purpose. So what I'm going to do is add another all, because I just want to make a change that is technically inaccurate. And in this case, I'm going to have too many alls. So I'll save the file, which again, you shouldn't do. Let's exit out. And it's telling me that there's a syntax error. And that's what I wanted to show you. If you end up getting an error when you edit this file, it's important that you understand what your options are, especially considering that it doesn't even tell you what your options are. It just asks, what now? Well, I don't know. What should I put here? It doesn't even give me a menu or any kind of description at all. It expects that I know what I'm supposed to type to reverse this change or accept it anyway. But what it's wanting to do is give you an option to either contest this or just go back into the file and fix it properly. So anyway, we have a few options here, and since it doesn't give you the options, I'm going to give you a few of them right now. If we type E, that's going to allow us to re-edit the file. It'll take us back into the editor, give us a chance to fix whatever we did wrong. We could also use X. What X will do is allow us to exit without saving changes. So that's a perfectly valid thing to do. If you have something in the file that is not correct syntax, then exiting without saving changes wouldn't be a bad thing to do. It's just going to revert it to the way it was before you made the change. And then we also have the Q option, which you should never use. I'm only giving you this option so that you're aware of it. But anyway, Q will save the changes. The invalid change, it'll actually save it. And that's why you should never use Q. Unless you really do know better than the Visudo command, and you're absolutely sure that what you typed is absolutely correct, Maybe then you could type Q, but I haven't really seen any case where Q was necessary. So I recommend just avoiding that altogether. So what I'll do instead is just type E for edit. That brings me right back into the file. Let's find out what the heck we did wrong. Of course, I already know what I did wrong because I did it on purpose. I added an additional all. So let's remove that. So we got rid of the problem. Let's attempt to save it again. 
Now when I exit, if it doesn't give me any errors, then that means I corrected the problem. Let's see what happens. And there we go. So this line right here is just what we had before. It didn't give me any new errors, so we're good to go. We were able to edit the sudoers file with the by sudo command. We had an error, but we were able to go back into the file and fix that error, which is exactly what I wanted to show you. So there you go. Sudo is one of those things that we administrators use all the time, and some people just really don't know how it works. Of course, it gets even more advanced from here, and perhaps I'll cover even more advanced concepts surrounding sudo in the future, but for right now, I think that was a good overview of the basics to get you started. Definitely subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.